Just an FYI for all you grappling fans, the Fight Pass Invitational is back. The grappling event will be headlined by Craig Jones versus Felipe Pena, and you can stream it live only on UFC Fight Pass on June 29th. I'm coming out of retirement, guys. June 29th, I'll be taking on Philippe Penner, the undisputed number one grappler in the sport right now. I'll be competing against him live on UFC Fight Pass. It'll be at the apex. It'll be at the beginning of UFC Fight Week in Vegas. So crazy uh, big UFC week. Uh, we're going to start it with the grappling show at the Apex. No doubt there'll be some power slap going on. There's a grappling tournament. I think it's called GrappleCon. And then it'll end with Alexander Volkanovsky defeating Yair Rodriguez to regain his featherweight title. So yeah, it's going to be a massive week for uh, grappling MMA fans in total. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the match, why I've decided to come out of retirement. Something happened this year that truly inspired me. It really touched me in a way uh, that brought me back to the sport because I was definitely on my way out. I was a bit sick of it. I've been competing for over 10 years now. I was getting a bit over it, you know, like I was more coaching MMA guys. But again, something happened that inspired me. Earlier this year, Gordon Ryan was meant to face Philippe Penner. I believe it was going to be their fourth match. And what happened was Gordon had to pull out. He had a nasty yeast infection. But what inspired me to return to the sport was the way everyone banded together. We're talking coaches, athletes, and fans. Everyone united in this sport, and they all took a great amount of pleasure in Gordon Ryan's suffering over his health conditions. And I just sat back and looked at that, and instigated a little bit too, but mostly just sat back, looked at it, and thought, how could I ever leave this sport? These are my people, and I wanna come back, I wanna be a part of it, I wanna be a part of a big match, and I wanna put on an exciting match against Philippe Penner. Um, yeah, truly inspiring stuff, but let's talk a bit about the match. Philippe Penna, I think, I mean, he's number one. How can you deny that this is uh, the best grapple in the world? Uh, the circle best grapple in the world, Gordon Ryan, has lost to him now three times. Uh, he's only beaten Philippe one time. He made Philippe quit after, uh, like an hour into the grappling match. Um, Whereas Philippe at this last event, like he pulled off something I've never seen before. He made Gordon quit before the match. So it's like, if we look at those two victories, you got to go with the guy that finished it quicker, that made the other guy quit quicker. And somehow this man made him quit pre-match. Absolutely mind-blowing stuff out of Philippe Penna. Definitely so. We could all take a page out of his book to learn. But I mean, what what is the rule set? We're doing EBI rules here. I mean, EBI rules alone changes all the time. ADCC rules can be super confusing as well. I've done four of them. I don't even know the fucking rules. You know what I mean? I should probably go to a rules meeting. But people always ask me, they say, hey, what do you think's the best rule set uh, as a competitor? What do you think's the most exciting? Because the fans, they always want to know what's the most exciting rule set. Because rule set, that's what they want to watch. They want to watch exciting stuff. Some people say ADCC. Some people lie and they say IBJJF. But really, no matter what rule set we're in, there's going to be an athlete out there that he's going to look at that rule set and he's going to be like, gee, how can I go in there and fuck this whole thing up? How can I win in the most boring way possible? So really, we can't rely on the rule set to force action. We can only rely on promoters not booking boring-ass grapplers to do these events. And that being said, I've been in some boring-ass matches too. Uh, but really, punish these grapplers for that. If they go out there and don't put on a show, get out of here. Let's try to slowly build a promotion. Don't rush it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't bet on one guy. Bet, as a promoter, you should bet on the sport. You should aim for slow growth, but consistently put on exciting matches. Pick grapplers and put on exciting matches and hope they learn how to navigate social media and promote it. A promoter should aim for slow growth. You put all your eggs in one basket. It can cost you, and we have seen what can happen if a promoter bets all in on one grappler and that grappler falls through. So I think slow, consistent growth, the sport's growing. We just need a promoter that paces themselves and slowly works it out. But again, we're doing EBI rules here. 12 minute EBI match. I said I wouldn't really do more than a 12 minute regulation match because I mean, fuck, my cardio is terrible. But also most of the time, seven, eight minutes into a match, 
nothing really great from the fan perspectives happening after that point. Like we'll have, uh, there'll be people out there that play the ego perspective and they're like, yeah, obviously as the match continues, we get to the 20 minute mark, I can eventually break you down and submit you. That's for sure. You you are absolutely right about that, but that's, that's kind of boring to watch. Really, again, we want two guys <clears throat> go out there, try to kill each other. We don't want them to pace themselves. We want them to have confidence so they can try to kill each other for the whole regulation period of a match. And if there's an overtime, go in there fresh. The second we get to 20, 30 minute matches, intelligent grapplers second guessing, making commitments. And then they nothing. sometimes nothing happens because they're pacing themselves for that last part of the match. Me on the other hand, even if it's a long match, you've seen me in the past, I go out there, I give it a red hot shot for three minutes and we don't get it. We're in trouble, we're gassed out. We don't believe in pacing. And that's something that applies to many areas of my life, unfortunately. Something else that's very interesting is there is a greasing clause in the contract. I've never seen this before because it's like, how how can we pick, how can we test for grease? You know what I mean? What we, I remember Chael Sonnen asked him one time, how do you check for grease? He goes, we rub it and if we can click our fingers, there's no grease on that. And I was like, I don't know if that's very scientific, but it's the most scientific method I've heard out of any organizer. Obviously we've all thought we've competed against Grease grapplers, nine out of 10 times though, is we're frustrated that our opponent's defensive, we can't get a grip on him. And he keeps slipping away and they're like, let's justify why we can't control this guy. It's because he's too slippery. And most of the time that's the bottom guy. I've done it before, I'm trying to make grips, he keeps slipping out. I could stand up and attack this man at any moment and negate some of that slipperiness. But again, I've said in my routine, I think I can beat this guy from here. He keeps slipping out of grips and I think, fuck, he must be cheating. You know what I mean? We've all fallen prey to that. I've put up posts after matches before. You look like a fucking, you look like a bit of an idiot, you know, but we all make that mistake sometimes uh, where we assume it's grease. Honestly, it's it's hilarious about this really because yeah, hard to test, but I'm taking no precautions here. I've stopped using lube leading up to this match and it's actually had some unintended benefits. One of which is I have not been able to pull guard at all. My wrestling has gone through the roof. Lastly, I want to say one more thing about the greasing. If you really want to fix it, have us wear long sleeve rash guards and long sleeve tights. That's going to negate some of the uh, effects of the greasing. Obviously, we have a bit more uh, texture there to hang on to. We're going to look like fucking Peter Pan in a play. But again, it's not the most, uh, it's not the coolest sport to begin with really anyway. it's I mean, it probably looks cooler than a wrestling singlet. But guys, that's really all I, all I really want to say for this. From my perspective, I hope I got there, submit Philippe Penner, then I can sit back, retire as number one, go on another Dylan Dennis kick, bask in my own glory, really release a few instructionals, pretend they're about the match, whether they are or not, and yeah, make some uh, obviously make some big money off this match. But yeah, it'll be a good time. Expect some uh, some fun on social media, and we'll try to uh, really build this, hype this up as much as possible. One last important detail I wanted to talk about uh, leading up to this grappling event, and that's something that I think really holds a black cloud over the sport, something no one, we talk about it, no one really talks about it, and that is the amount of steroids that go on in this sport. We're getting athletes fail tests left and right for IBGF. So I, uh, I've tried to make a step forward, and what I've requested is that UFC Fight Pass test every single event that I'm not a part of because I believe we should be cleaning up this sport and we should be holding athletes accountable and if I can have that influence then I think really I'm taking a step forward and helping to change the sport.